So now we have our entities. We've done our topic modeling so people can explore the data, but now we want to talk about the graph. So there's two ways we can extract uh, relationships. Again, heuristics and models. So um, uh, models are, uh, uh, for, for this, are very rare. The idea of relationship extraction is, is, is this not a, uh, as common of a, a, of a set of models out there as, as we find for like NER models. And creating labels requires experts. If you give someone a, a, a biomedical article and ask them, what's the relationship between these two entities in there? And the average person will not be able to give a useful answer. Um, and not only that, is that oftentimes these entities are not necessarily in one small place of the text. They can actually be scattered throughout the document, which means that not only do you require an expert, but each document will require that expert's attention. Um, there are shortcuts and some corners you can cut around this. Like you might be able to reduce your document to sections or even paragraphs and just get your labelers to answer on that. Um, but it's, it's, it's generally pretty difficult and expensive uh, uh, potentially for gathering labels. So heuristics is sort of what we're going with now. Um, uh, so the idea is that these relationships are, um, are gonna be in the text and we can identify them. Now, if you're trying to extract typed relationships from the text, it's complicated. And as I was saying to Dimitri earlier, um, uh, different styles of language can make this very difficult. If you have very verbose language, like academic language, um, the, um, the, 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 the way the relationships are stated can span sentences. So it'll be hard to come up with heuristics that extract different kinds of relationships. So we're going with an untyped one for when we build this model with the idea that once we find these relationships, it'll actually be easier to create more targeted data sets to identify the relationships. So when you're doing um, uh, this untyped one, you wanna consider like, what's your context? Are you doing it within the document or within the sentence? Again, the pros and cons. When you find two entities mentioned in a sentence, you know that, that the author is, is saying they are somehow connected. On the other hand, there are still probably connections if they're mentioned in the same documents. Um, so it depends on whether you want to uh, uh, be get fewer edges and be very confident or get more edges and know that you might be getting some tangential or, or, or even spurious relationships. And then there's also how you want to weight them. You could not weight them. You could just um, uh, look at the, um, uh, the, the, the binary of whether they're uh, in, the, uh, you know, in a certain number of documents or in one document or what have you. You could look at the, uh, the count, but the problem with count is that words have different um, uh, uh, numbers of occurrences. And so you'll end up having all your most popular terms highly connected to each other, um, uh, uh, which is not going to be very helpful. So we're using TFIDF because that's sort of a, a classic way of identifying how relevant a, 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 a word is and our term is in a document. What we do is we, we gather the TFIDF for each of these uh, term uh, document pairs. Then what we do is we look at, uh, we use that to calculate a weighted jacquard. So that's essentially, um, what's the combined TFIDF in all the documents they occur in together? And then we divide that by the TFIDF in, um, uh, in uh, all the documents that either the, of them occur in. And um, uh, if that's one, then that means, first of all, it means that they're all, they're all re they're referenced in the same set of documents. Um, and the closer that is to one, the me that means the more of their shared, relate uh, shared mentions um, uh, dominate sort of the, the set of all references to them. So um, that gives us our, our initial graph that we can then go and uh, uh, do additional uh, process, uh, do additional analyzing on. So now we have our graph built. Um, uh, here's the full pipeline. So we come in with our corpus, we do our NLP pipeline, and that gives us our processed articles. This is our normalized tokens for entity extraction and our lemmas for, for topic modeling. We do the topic modeling and we save off the data um, uh, that we need for LDA visualization. So like PyLDA does. 
We then take our normalized tokens and we do our entity extraction, whether that's a Hokorasic with some structured data or an NER model. Um, and we have our lists of entities. So from there, we have our documents and our entities and we can build our graph. We store that in a graph database like OriantDB or Amazon Neptune. We store our documents along with the, um, uh, the entities discovered therein in a search index like Elasticsearch. Now we have our app. 